Okay, so uh, today we're going to look at section 6.1. I'm breaking it up into two parts. We'll do part one today and then part two on Wednesday. So uh, today our main goal is going to be um, writing equations. So we're going to learn to write equations. To describe patterns. Um, before we get to that, I wanted to do a quick review on evaluating expressions and equations. So here, evaluating expressions, remember there's no equal sign. I have uh, part A here, um, 2x plus 5 when x equals 2. So wherever we have a variable, we put in a set of brackets. And then we plug in this value here for the x. So we have 2 times 2 plus 4. You need to remember your bed mass rules. So that is 4 plus 5, which is 9. Um, question B, same thing. We have an expression here and I want to evaluate it when s equals negative 5. So I rewrite the equation, putting in a bracket where I have the variable, and for the bracket I'm going to plug in negative 5 because that's what s equals, and then I go to calculate it. So negative 4 times negative 5 is 20 minus 3 which gives me 17. So we'll be using um, this in the lesson today. That's why I'm doing a review. And then evaluating equations. So with an equation we have an equal sign. The first one, p equals 3x minus 5. I want to evaluate it when x here equals negative 4. So I put in a set of brackets for x and I plug in negative 4. So p equals 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12, and minus 5. Um, and then minus 12 minus 5 is minus 17. So p equals minus 17. And for question b here, y equals negative 2x plus 7, and we want to evaluate this equation for when y equals 5. So I'm going to plug in a 5 for y. And as you can see here, I, ha I need to isolate for my x. So this links in with solving equations that we did before the spring break. So we always move the um, constant. So we want to isolate the x. So we have the negative 2 that's being multiplied by x and the plus 7. We always move over the um, constant first, so it's a plus 7, I will minus 7. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So I have negative 2 equals negative 2x, and then the x is being multiplied by negative 2, I do the opposite, I divide by negative 2. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So these cancel out and we end up with x equals 1. Okay, so that's a review for evaluating. Um, and now let's move on into uh, today's lesson. We're going to look at pictorial patterns. So that's pictorial patterns, that just means it's a, a series of pictures, like as you can see in this example, that follows a pattern. And our goal is to going to be to come up with an equation that represents the pattern. So I'm going to do three examples with you guys. They're all very similar. Um, and then you'll be working on a worksheet for this section. So example one, here we have figure number one, figure number two, figure number three, and figure number four. Um, it's asking me in part A, describe how the pattern grows that relates the figure number to the number of squares. So in figure number one, we have one square. 
In figure number two, we have four. In figure number three, these were added on here. So four plus three, which is seven squares. And then in figure number four, we added three more here. So we have 10 squares. So in words for part A, we can say as the figure number increases, by one, so as we go up by one, the number of squares increases by three. Okay, so next we're going to create a table of values to represent this here. And we will have figure number on the left here, and on the right hand side, we can have the number of squares. Um, I'm going to call this X here and this Y. So you'll get lots of practice at this. Um, why is it X? Why is it Y? The figure number here is the independent variable and the number of squares is the dependent variable. So you'll see this, um, you'll see this throughout the lesson. So if for figure number one, I'm just leaving a space up here, we have one square. For figure number two, we have four squares. For figure number three, we have seven squares. And for figure number four, we have 10 squares. Okay, so you'll notice um, our X values are increasing by one. And our Y values are increasing by three. They're going up by three each time. Um, now, Part C here, so this is, this is, um, I would say, probably going to be the most challenging part. Let's write an equation to represent this pattern. So we're going to be using this um, equation over and over again. It's going to read y equals, and I'm going to put a box here, um, something x plus something. So we need to um, look at this table of values and figure out what this number is and what this number is here. Um, this one here, this is our constant because it's by itself. This one here is the Y value. When X equals zero. So if we go here back to our table of values, when x equals zero, you'll notice we don't have that, but we can write it in, because this went, if this is going up by one, then if we're going backwards, we would have to subtract one. So this would be zero here. And then on the right hand side, if we're adding three, we would just subtract three. So one take away three is negative two. So it would be this number here, when x, the y value, when x equals zero. That's what we write here. So we would write in um, negative two, okay? And that will help us figure out this value right here. So um, you're going to have to look at the table of values and what do you have to do to the x value to get the y value? So we know that we have to subtract two. So for here, for example, um, three times what will give me, take away two will give me seven. Um, four times what take away two will give me 10, right? So, um, you need to spend some time 
seeing how to relate the table of values to this. So if I take my x value in this case and I multiply it by 3 and then I subtract 2. So we have y equals 3x minus 2. So this is my equation. The plus and the minus just become minus. So we have y equals 3x minus 2. Um, like I said, this is my equation here. So if I plug in 1 for x, so 1 times 3, take away 2, I get this y value. If I plug in 2 for x, so 2 times 3, take away 2, I get 4, right? So you're coming up with the equation based on this table of values here. Um, I purposely chose x and y because eventually we'll be graphing them, but sometimes you might see other letters. Like in the workbook, for example, they might use the letter F to represent figure number and S to represent number of squares. So you might have seen, um, you might see S equals 3F minus, minus 2 as well. Uh, always remembering this one here is our x value and this one here is our y value. So we've come up with an equation to represent this pattern. Now what we're going to do is use the equation. So we're on the second page here. We're going to use the equation to predict how many squares there would be in figure number 16. So the equation that we came up with is y equals 3x minus 2, remembering that x represents the figure number and y represents the number of squares. Okay, so we're going to use this equation to predict how many squares are in figure 16 because I do not want to, I'm just going to go back to the first sheet, I do not want to um, draw out a table of values all the way to 16. I mean that wouldn't take too long but you might have situations where it's like 93 or 108. So um, we want to use the equation to predict what y will be when x equals 16. So I'm just going to draw a line here. What's y? How many squares are there in figure 16? Um, so using the equation, we have y equals 3, and I'm going to plug in 16 for, for x. So 3 times 16, take away 2, ends up being 46. Whoops. So y equals 46. So we can say in figure number 16, there are 46 squares. Okay. And then question E, which figure number has 106 squares? So we're going to use the equation again. Y equals 3x minus 2. And we're going to plug in 106 now for Y because we're wanting to um, solve for the figure number here. So I plug in 106 for y, and I need to solve the equation for x. So I will add 2 to both sides. That's why we practiced that in the beginning. 108 equals 3x, and divide both sides by 3, and we end up with x equals 36. So we can say that figure number 
36 has 108 squares. Okay, so we're going to practice, this was just example one, we have two more to get through, but we're going to practice this same concept over um, two more times so that you guys get the hang of it because I know this can be challenging. Okay, so in example two here, Alexa uses yellow and white tiles to create a pattern. So figure number one, you can go and count them up. There is eight yellow tiles in figure number two. You can go and count them up. There is 12. And in figure number three, there is 16. Okay, so step one is to make a table of values to show the number of yellow tiles in relation to the figure. So we have figure number on the left and we'll use the letter X to represent that. And on, on the right hand side we have yellow tiles. And we will use the letter Y to represent that. Um, I'll leave a little bit of space. So figure number one has eight tiles. Figure number two has 12. Figure number three has 16. Um, we could keep going here. Figure number four, because it looks like we're going up by four each time. So if we add four, we would end up with with 20. So there's our table of values. Um, describe the pattern in words. So as the figure number increases by one, the yellow tiles increase by four. Okay, uh, next we're going to come up with an equation to model the number of yellow tiles. So we, we do this, y equals something x plus something. And if you'll remember from example number one, this constant here, or the number that's by itself, this one here is the y value when x equals zero. So I go back to my table of values. Um, I notice I don't have x equals zero, but I can uh, figure out what it would be because I'm just going down by one. So if this is zero, um, on the right hand side, if I add four, I have to subtract four. So eight take away four would be four. So I know that my y value is four. This is also called the um, constant or the y-intercept. Um, when you get into grade nine and grade 10, this will be used quite a, um, quite a bit. And then this number here, we go back to our table of values and what do we have to do with an x value to get to 12? So two times what? and we know that we have to add four to it, will give us 12. Three times what, and we know we have to add four to it, will give us 16. So you can spend some time thinking about that, and it ends up being four. So if I take an x value of three, and I multiply it by four, which is 12, and then I add four, my y value ends up being 16, and that should hold true for any of these, um, any of these numbers. This here also has a special name. We call it the um, coefficient. In grade nine, we call it the rate of change. In grade 10, we call it the um, slope. So we've come up with our e equation, y equals four x plus four. And just a reminder, you might see other variables used as well, like this y might say t for tiles, and x might be f for um, 
figure number. So t equals 4f plus plus 4. Uh, part D, how many tiles are in figure number 24? So let's see, we're going to use the um, equation. And remember that X is our figure number, so we'll plug in 24 there. And 4 times 24 is 96, plus 4 gives us 100. So y equals 100. So we can say, um, if we were to continue this table of values, when we got to figure number 24, there would be 100 yellow tiles. Okay, question E. Is it possible to have a figure with 54 yellow tiles? So let's see. We write out our equation. Remember that the Y represents the tiles and the X represents the figure number. And we're going to plug in 54 for Y. and solve for x. So we subtract 4 from both sides. I'm just going to carry it on over here so that we have 50 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4 and we end up with um, 50 divided by 4. This does not give us a whole number. So we know that it is not possible to have a figure with 54 yellow, um, 54 yellow tiles. Right, x equals 12.5. We can't have figure number 12.5. So no, it's not possible. because x is not a whole number. Okay, um, last example here. The following shows a pattern of heptagons. That's a seven-sided figure um, connected along one side. Each side is one centimeter in length. Um, describe the pattern in words. So let's just go here. This first heptagon, if we were to count the number of sides, it would have um, seven centimeters, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the second one here, um, I'm just looking, we're going to be calculating the perimeter. So we're not going to include the lines in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This one is 12 centimeters. The third, um, third figure, if we were to calculate, if we were to add up the perimeter, we have 17 centimeters. And in the fourth one, We add those up, we end up with 22 centimeters because each side is represents one centimeter. Okay, so describe the pattern in words in relation to the perimeter. I should have added that into the notes. So that should have um, been part of the notes here. Sorry about that. Uh, so we can say for, as the figure number increases by one, the perimeter increases by five because we're adding five to, um, as we go up by one.
Okay, next up, make a table of values showing the perimeter of the first six figures. So figure number, which is X and perimeter, which we give Y. Um, figure number one is seven centimeters. Figure number two is 12 centimeters. Figure number three is 17. Four is 22 um, and so forth. So I can even just write centimeters up here so I don't have to write it in. Um, next, what equation determines the perimeter of each figure? So I write out the, um, that equation that we've been doing y equals something x plus something and by now hopefully you, sh you should know this is the y value when x equals zero so i go back up to my table of values when x equals zero looks like i'm adding five so i subtract five i have two okay and now that um now what i need to do is what do I have to do with this x value to get this y value? So how does 3 turn into 17? What do I have to multiply it by? And I know that I have to eventually add 2. So 3 times what plus 2 gives me 17. Um, what do I have to do to the 4 to get 22? So 4 times what plus 2 gives me 22? So you can spend some time thinking about that and we get 5. So y equals 5x plus 2. Um, and we could also, I've, I'm using x's and y's because eventually we'll be graphing them, but the y stands for perimeter. So we could have had y equals 5f to represent figure plus 2. I mean, that could have been an equation. That could have been the equation as well as long as this value is 5 and this value is 2. So what's the perimeter of figure number 12? So y equals 5 times 12 plus 2. 5 times 12 is 60 plus 2 is 62 centimeters. So figure number 12 has a perimeter of 62 centimeters and question E can a figure have a perimeter of 74 centimeters? So we'll plug that in for Y because Y represents the perimeter. So we plug in 74 and let's see if we get a, a whole number for X. So we subtract two from both sides. So 72 equals five X. And if we divide both sides by five, we know that 72 divided by five will not give me a whole number. So we would say it isn't possible. So a figure can't have a perimeter of 74 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to end it there. I apologize, I noticed this took a um, little bit longer, but this was a, uh, a new topic and I want to make sure that you guys um, understand it because like I said, we do a lot of this in grade nine, a lot of this in grade 10, and it just keeps on building on what we learn here. So you can start the worksheet.